Hey English students, it's Mr. Gibson, your English teacher. Um, we are winding down semester one. We're coming to a close here. So just encouraging you to get your work done, wrap it all up, put a nice little ribbon on it, and give it to me as my Christmas present. That'd be great. Thank you. Um, so for you, for you uh, students, you will have a, a writing assignment that's due um, uh, December 16th, sorry. The, uh, that's a Friday. That's the last day before Christmas break. Um, <clears throat> and what this is going to be, it's going to be uh, focusing on the six traits, the six traits of writing that you'll be covering in, in Compass. Um, so the six traits, there's, there's um, idea development, organization, um, voice, word choice, conventions, fluency, sentence fluency, things like that. And so um, I wish I would have set it up differently, but I don't know. Everything, I, I, I was so swamped with, with uh, trying to get all my classes in order and trying to keep up with them, the grading and, and tutoring and things like that, that I didn't realize that I will be assigning this, this writing assignment while you are learning about the, the content in, in Compass. And so, I really would have liked you to learn about it ahead of time and then assign you the writing assignment. So, um, I'm not going to be grading on all the six traits of writing. Well, at least I'm not going to emphasize or focus on those. I'm going to mostly grade you on organization and voice or word choice. So, I'd like to talk about that today. I'm a little bit about the organizing an essay. Um, Sorry, I need to kind of move my mouse cursor so my computer doesn't go black. Anyway, um, so with organi organizing an essay, I talked about a couple weeks ago um, about paragraph structure and making sure all your uh, all your topics are in order. You have a nice little introductory paragraph. You have body paragraphs. Each body paragraph having a main idea that it focuses on, and then a concluding paragraph. And, uh, you know, I, I gave the uh, barn analogy, but really, you know, there's several analogies you can use. Anytime there's things that are designated to certain areas, um, you could give up an essay analogy. I was just thinking about Black Friday a couple weeks ago, you know, going to the stores, department stores, everything, when you go into a department store, everything's in its own little location, right? So when you go to the toy department, you have toys that it covers in that area. If, you, if they incorporated underwear somewhere in there, that'd be weird. And I'd probably never go back to that store again. If I'm like shopping for toys and all of a sudden, ah, oh, some Fruit of the Loom briefs, or I don't know. That's just weird. Anyway, so you want to make sure your paragraphs in your essay are um, structured similarly. Um, so anyway, make sure you're organiz organizing your essay in a logical and uh, easy to follow way format. This is going to be an expository essay. Expository means you expose me to new information or it's an informative, uh, informative writing assignment. Um, so the topic is, is really up to you, um, but as long as you can follow the, the structure of an essay. I'm really focusing on can you follow the structure of an essay not just throw unto me a big block of of words you know can you divide it up into an introduction body paragraphs and a conclusion to where I feel like I've read something um, that I can comprehend understand easily um, the second thing is voice so you can you can inform me on something you can pick a topic and tell me about it and organize it in a in a um, logical and and correct structure but if you have no voice behind it it's going to sound very generic something that I could get from anybody anywhere um, and so when I say voice in writing I'm talking about the words you use so kind of word choice and voice they're kind of incorporated together uh, the voice it's you know let me put it this way. So here's a little hypothetical, rhetorical, well, that's a hypothetical uh, example. 
So let's say you want to go to the, the movies with your friend. And uh, let's say you don't have a driver's license yet. Some of you are in that stage where, you know, you're, you're, you're wanting to get a driver's license. You may not have one. Ah. So it's kind of an awkward stage to where you're the age that you could have a driver's license, but you may not have one. Darn it. Right? Bummer deal. So uh, you're going to meet your friend at the theater, but your mom says, you know what? I'll drop you off at the theater. Um, after I do an errand, I need to go to Walmart. And so I'll just drop you off after that. Now, come on now. You're, you're, that's going to look weird. That's going to look, you know, oh man, mom, I don't want you to drop me off. You know, my friends are going to, oh, they're going to make fun of me. They probably won't. I'm just hypothetical, right? And so you beg her, oh, please, 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 can I just, you know, can you, can you go to Walmart? And then can I just walk to the theater? It's not too far. It's like, three blocks. Can I just, please? And so your mom finally says, okay, I guess, but you better be safe, right? Look both ways before you cross the street. So anyway, this is a story. Keep, keep with me. There's a point to this. Um, so let's say you, you start walking, you come to this major intersection, and all of a sudden you see a huge T-bone crash that's pretty big you've got three calls to make okay you've got to call the police because you're an eyewitness to a car accident right it's the right thing to do you don't know if anybody's injured or not right I mean it looked pretty big but still may not have any you know people um, that are injured but you need to make the call. Second, you need to call your mom because you know if you don't, she's gonna worry about you because she's gonna come out of Walmart, see this huge wreck and think, oh my goodness, my baby must have been hit or something while he was crossing the street. And then you have to call your friend because you saw the most awesome thing ever, okay? So, let's just pretend I'm gonna call the cops right now. So this is going to be pretty nerve-wracking, you know? It's not every day you call the cops. You call the cops. Doo -doo -doo. Yes, hello? Um, yeah, um, I'm, I just was about to cross the street and I saw uh, this, this car accident that occurred. Um, no, I don't think anybody was injured, um, but it's here on the corner of Overland and Cole. Yes, um, there were two vehicles involved. It, was, it looked like a T-bone crash. Yes, um, I was just about to cross the street. Okay, all right, yeah. Yeah, I'll stay here. Yeah, thanks, bye. Right, so my voice was kind of nerv nervous. You know, you could hear the, the, the nervousness in my voice. Um, I tried to sound, but still uh, calm and, and uh, professional, I guess you could say. Now I need to call my mom. Boop, boop. Hi, mom. Yeah, it's me. No, no, everything's okay. It's okay. It's okay, mom. No, I was just calling. Um, you know, I, I was, I was walking down the sidewalk, and I think like, like a couple blocks down, I think I saw like these cars, that maybe crashed into each other. No, mom, I'm fine. Everything's okay. No. Completely fine. I just wanted to call you so you know that I'd be okay and that nothing happened, you know, when you come out of Walmart and you see this car wreck and Yeah, no. Yes, I have a clean pair of pants on, yes. No, everything's fine, mom. Okay. Love you too. Bye. Boop. Right? Um consoling in a way. I had to reassure my mom. You know, the tone of voice was very matter-of-factly, you know, oh, yes, everything's fine, please, I was, you know, you know, and did you notice I distanced myself from the wreck, all of a sudden, I think I saw it down the road, right, so the voice, the word choice was different from the police, you know, police's were fact-based, mom's was a little more, the truth was stretched a little bit to appease her in some way, now I need to call my friend. Oh, 
my gosh, dude. I just saw the most amazing thing in the world. There were these two cars, and they just blew up. Boom. They just smashed into each other in fire explosions. Some guy just flew out like 50 feet. It was amazing. OMG, LOL. <laughs> right? Do you see the three, the differences between the three? Um, so that's an example of how voice can change a message, right? You can either have it very back-based, um, kind of bland, where anybody can do it. Um, but the point I want to make is your audience. You got to remember your audience when you're writing, and that will affect the voice that you use. And so even though this is an academic essay, um, I want you to use a very personal voice. I want you to use proper, you know, grammar um, and things like that. But I want you to not make this so academic to where it feels like a scholarly paper. I want it to be, um, in a way, I want you to have a more casual voice. Um, you're dealing with maybe more personal, including a personal connection in this essay with whatever topic you choose. So consider voice, consider organization and good luck with that. If you have any questions, please let me know. Read the requirements on Blackboard um, for your for this essay. And uh, if you need any help, if you need um, somebody to read through it, your rough draft, you can send that over to me. That'd be fine. Just try to get those in on time. And have a great week. Good luck.